What's going on, guys? So, we're live from my basement. Um, what we're trying to do is on this two-week break from class, it's not really a break. What happened was is there was a couple of positive cases popped up, and out of extreme precaution, an abundance of caution, they're just having us all leave while they disinfect the building for two weeks. So instead of lose, completely losing out on that time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover a few shop jobs with you guys so that when I see you the week of the 26th, we can just jump right into work. The first one I'm going to cover is T7, and it's on harmonic voltage. We're going to connect the primary in a three-wire Y, and we're going to connect the secondary in a three-wire delta. And when we go to take our polarity test, it's going to cause a harmonic voltage. We want you guys to see a harmonic voltage, um, understand what they, the problems they can cause. Harmonics, when they first started discovering them, about in the, in the, in the 80s or so, when, people, when the personal computer came out, and people would just start plugging personal computers into outlets. The problem is they didn't realize the effect that they were causing. Some of the problems they were causing was nuisance trippers, nuisance tripping on breakers, or the breaker wasn't tripping at all when it should. So an example of, what, of it tripping when it shouldn't was people would go down and have a nuisance trip on an outlet. They'd go down and put the amp clamp on a breaker and realize it's only drawing five amps. Well, the breaker's rated for 20 amps. We sh this shouldn't be happening. So they replaced the breaker. It was still happening. Come to find out that personal computer wasn't drawing current in a linear manner like the resistive light bulb was. It was drawing current in pulses of their, or the appearance of pulses because it had a bridge rectifier in there with a filter of some sort converting the AC from the outlet to DC power that's needed within the computer. So that was causing electrical distortion in the system in the form of harmonics. We'll talk about that a little bit more here. So that's on single phase harmonic would be personal computers, um, ballasts and lights. Um, three phase ones would be um, VFDs. This transformer bank, a four wire system, a four wire Y system actually does cause harmonics. And that's what we're trying to show you guys. So what are harmonics? Harmonics are voltages or currents that operate at a frequency that is a multiple of the fundamental power frequency or a multiple of the base frequency. And I'll put this PowerPoint up on Blackboard for you guys. It's, it's out of the textbook that we've been referencing for Transformers, uh, the, the Herman's book. But um, multiples of the base frequency. The frequency we're going to be dealing with is our third harmonic. So it's 60 times 3. We're going to have 180 hertz. Um, again, it's talking about some of the things that cause it. When we have current being drawn in a non-linear manner, bridge rectifiers, converting AC to DC. Right here, this is our standard sine wave up on top. And this is just showing you what the current wave could look like due to harmonics, just very distorted. And this is what our voltage sine wave could look like, distorted. The problem with harmonics is they can, they can cause problems in our equipment in our system. They can damage our equipment because they'll cause unnecessary heating, um, unnecessary stress on the equipment, over trip, the overheating of conductors and transformers so it can burn them up, circuit breakers tripping when they should not trip. Another problem is the circuit breakers, they wouldn't trip when they were supposed to due to harmonics. Um, harmonics are classified by name, frequency, and a sequence. And so I'll put this PowerPoint up on Blackboard for you guys and we'll start talking about the job now. So, this is Y delta, and we're producing a harmonic voltage. We're going to construct the primary of this transformer bank in a Y configuration. We've got one transformer here. Here's our second transformer. Here's our third transformer. Part one, and don't stress if you can't see this, guys. This lab is on Blackboard for you. So, primary supply voltage is 208, three-phase, three-wire. So, that's why I only have line one, line two, and line three. We don't have a neutral yet. And we're, going to and we're going to connect that in a Y configuration. We're going to connect the secondary in a delta to produce a 123 phase three wire system. So, right here, first, this is one transformer. This is transformer one. This is transformer two. This is transformer three. So, we're going to come off of line one. After we go through slow blow fuses, go off of line one, go into H1. I'm going to come off of line two, and I'm going to go into H1 of transformer two. I'm going to come off of line three, 
and go with H1 of transformer three. But right now, this is an open circuit. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie the H4s common. So remember, your Y configuration looks like this, a Y. Here's my first transformer, my second transformer, my third transformer, and then they're all tied common. This H4 is gonna be that common point. So H4 to H4. I'm gonna run this H4 to that H4. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these in parallel. So I'm gonna connect H1 to H3, H2 to H4. This is transformer one. Now transformer two, H1 to H3, H2 to H4. Same thing for transformer three, H1 to H3, H2 to H4. We essentially have phase voltage applied to each individual transformer. I have 120 volts applied here from line one, 120 volts applied here from line two, and 120 volts applied here from line three. Those three voltages are 120 degrees out of phase with each other. So if I have 120 volts on this coil, I'll induce 120 volts on this coil because they're a one-to-one -one ratio. Same thing here, if I've got 120 on this coil, I'll induce 120 on this coil. They want us to get a 123 phase three wire system out. So I'm gonna connect these in parallel to keep this 120 constant. Over here, this is my second transformer. I will induce the same voltage on both of these coils. So 120 volts here, 120 volts here. I'm gonna put this transformer in parallel, keeping this 120, this 120 volts constant. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect X1 of my first transformer to X4 of my second transformer. This is gonna make up my B phase. Now, this is my third transformer. I will induce 120 on this coil as well as 120 on this coil. I'm gonna put these in parallel. I'm gonna jump X1 of my second transformer to X4 of my third transformer. That's gonna make up my C phase. Now, these two points here are gonna make up the top of the delta. So remember, a delta looks like a triangle. Over here, we'll say this is X4 of transformer one. This is X1. X1 of transformer one is jumped to X4 of transformer two. So this is X4 down here. They're tied together, making up my B phase. X4 of my second transformer. So X1 of my second transformer is jumped to X4 of my third. So this is X1 of transformer two. This is transformer one, this is transformer three. So X1 of transformer two is jumped to X4 of transformer three. And they make up my C phase. Now we're up here. We've got X4 of transformer one, and you've got X1 of transformer three. If you guys remember from T4, when we put transformers in parallel, we have to perform a polarity test. The polarity test is to ensure that all of the transformers have been phased out properly and that they're being connected to the same ports of polarity. For example, an outlet. If I measure from the hot side of my outlet to the neutral side of my outlet, I will measure 120 volts difference of potential. At no point in time would you ever think of taking a bare copper wire and touching those two sides together there's 120 volts difference of potential between those points. So before we tie X4 of transformer one and X1 of transformer three together to close this delta, we have to take a voltage reading or perform a polarity test to measure voltage from X4 to X1. Ideally, you wanna measure zero volts before we tie these two points together. We accept below five volts though. However, with this, we're creating a harmonic voltage. So when you measure from X4 to X1, you should measure a voltage. Um, I get voltages, I'm just cleaning this up here so it's not as busy, because as you guys can see, I don't have a giant dry erase or a giant dry erase board anymore. I got this tiny little thing that my kids color on. So before I can tie these together, I have to take a polarity test or a voltage reading. On this job, you'll measure a voltage. 
get voltages anywhere from 120 volts to 160 volts. You wouldn't think of connecting those two wires. Back in the day, before they had meters that could measure the frequency of that, they would connect a light bulb to those two points because they figured if it was 60 hertz power, it would turn a light bulb on and stay on. Anything other than that, in our case, 180 hertz, because the sine wave is changing polarity three times as much compared to 60 hertz power, it's changing polarity so frequently it doesn't have the same electrical pressure as 60 hertz power does. So we're just going to take a voltage reading and then turn our multimeter to the frequency setting to test that, and you'll measure 180 hertz. It's our triplet harmonic, or our third harmonic, because we've got 60 hertz, 60 hertz, 60 hertz. So, in order to get rid of that harmonic voltage, we're then going to run a jumper from H4 here, back to the panel, and go to neutral. We will then take a voltage reading between X4 and X1. When we do that, this neutral should carry the electrical distortion back to the, back to the service. So now X4 to X1, we should read below 5 volts. When we do that, you're going to connect X4 to X1, and they will make up your A phase. All right. Other ways that you, other things that you can do to get rid of harmonics is you can just do a delta to delta system instead of using the four wire. They also have filters. They've got um, passive filters, active filters, and hybrid filters. Basically, your high, your uh, your passive filter, they would go through. Um, the power company would come to your house or your house, your commercial establishment, or your industrial establishment. What type of loads do you have? Um, what are you starting up at what time? And they would size this active filter for those specific loads. Say you have another system where, and all that would happen is, is that passive filter would just, in, it would just induce a signal, the complete opposite polarity as the harmonic, to cancel it out. Um, and how an active filter does it, it's the same as a passive except an active. Passive filters are more or less, you have the same loads turning on at the same time all the time. So they can design something specifically for that. An active filter is a filter that's connected in the system either in series or parallel, where your passive filters could have been hooked up in parallel. Your active filters could be series or parallel, and they will adjust as the loads are created. They're a little bit more expensive. Um, and again, they just induce a signal, the complete opposite of the harmonic signal they're receiving to cancel it out. And then other, another one is a hybrid filter, where that's a combination of both the passive and the active filter. You guys aren't going to have to need, you're not going to need to know that for the quiz or the test, but it is, if you're pursuing this field, it's good to know that. So after you've completed this up at the job, I want you to call me over. We're going to do the polarity test together. After you do the polarity test and you connect these points together, we're going to take voltage readings, primary voltage readings, Line one to line two, line two to line three, line three to line one, and then secondary voltage readings. After that, we're going to connect this to the three-phase motor in your booth, and we're going to take primary voltage readings, primary current readings, secondary voltage readings, and secondary current readings. There are no shop, there are no questions for this shop job, but I will have a quiz on there that pertains to the basics of three phase, Y and Delta, as well as T7, T8, and T9, which I will put videos out for those jobs. That's all I have for you right now, guys. Obviously, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Shoot me an email and I'll get back to you. Have a good one, guys.